Hi, this is Paul from White Empress, and you're watching Brutally Delicious. Hey, welcome to Brutally Delicious. I'm Bruce Moore. Today we've got another great show in store for you. This time, we're going to be joined by the guys in Ghoul for a show unlike anything you've ever seen here before. So if you stay tuned, kick back, relax, and let's see what Ghoul has cooked up for us today. Okay, so here's what you're going to do first, all right? You take a piece of your arm, beef, and you put the defendant in the freezer for about two hours or so. You, know, you don't want to freeze it, you just want to make it a nice and cold, and make it a nice slice. You, know, you want a nice thin slice. In order to do that, you get a nice, good knife. Now, uh, I can't seem to find it anywhere. I don't know. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is good because this is actually the kitchen version, I guess. Yes, I think I saw Tyler Florence. So anyway, you want to get a nice, maybe about a quarter inch, eighth inch slice of your uh, beef. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go across this side, right like that. Nice and thin, yes, very good, you know. Don't forget, I know that some of you are sitting here asking yourself, but who? I thought you were cannibals. We may be cannibals. But we're not animals. We know how to live it up in the catacombs, okay? So we're going to slice this beef nice and thin, as you see here. Always, when cutting your beef, go against the grain, okay? Very important. If you cut with the grain, you get very, very tough arm meat. Beef? Meat. Meat. We can agree on meat, okay. Now, We've got some nice slices going here. Okay, so the next step, the, the second step, if you will, you know, we have different steps, is to get your uh, saran wrap. You want to pound this beef up very thin. You see this? Not thin enough. Okay, not for our purposes. So, digestor, if you could please hand me two pieces. Very nice. Of the Safran wrap, non-branded is, is both not only fine, but preferred. Thank you. So, now what you're going to do is to take your beef, you put it in between your Safran wrap right here, okay? And you get your meat mallet, okay? And it's gonna be used on both already dead and the live meat. We used it earlier on the heat. We did indeed. That's what we call a uh, marination, you know, and we would like to thank Pete very much for his donation to the show, okay? It's support for viewers like you. You know how it is. Okay, so you're going to take this and you're going to gently massage the beef. Okay, very nice, you know. It's like, a, it's kind of a sensual thing, you know, when you, when you do it that way. To me it is. Okay, so we've got some very nice thin beef. We're going to continue with the rest of the pieces. Not enough, very thin, you know. And fortunately, the pro tip to any uh, you know future television chefs is to talk as much as you can when you're banging a table. Okay. How do you uh, know when it's thin enough? When you get when digester, you know when it's thin enough when you get hired, okay? But no, in seriously, folks, you want kind of a very, very thin, like paper thin. Paper thin is good. If you know what you're doing as well, you get the very nice thin cut. I am known for my incompetence in general. Now when I say 
say paper thin. I don't mean like paper that you write on. I mean as thin as you can be bothered to make the meal. Right, so like paper if it was made out of beef. Yeah. You hit it with a hammer on it. Yes, yeah, it's, like, it's like a beef papyrus. Yeah, you know. I think this is how they make paper. I mean, who doesn't know how to make paper? I mean, Things are going well so far. Now, as we found this out, the next step that we're going to do is we want to end up dressing this with a lovely vinaigrette. Okay, so Digestor, I'm going to have you work on this. It, it, for, for the vinaigrette, okay, you're going to need uh, some kind of an acid. You can use vinegar if you like, or sulfuric. You know, it's your, it's your choice. If you've been cleaning the sink drains and you have extra lying around, you'll go for it. Disclaimer. Do not do that. Okay. Now we're going to take the lemon. You want to add some juice to the bowl. Okay. So you can cut it in half or any kind of shape. Oh, oh, look, at that. oh look at that! It's all fun and games. How much yeah. lemon juice do you need? I would put in, you know, half the lemon is probably fine. Yeah, we'll put in half the lemon juice. You know. Uh, you should probably fish out the seeds, but uh, you know, you don't have to. I mean, if you're into that kind of thing. In Crimsylvania, you know, we don't judge your lifestyle choices. So, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to add your oil to make sure you're making a vinaigrette. Okay, we've got some lovely uh, olives from the, that were taken from virgins that we murdered. I think that's how that works. I mean, I don't know how the, uh, what the uh, gradations are. Or gasoline. I mean, can someone explain that to me? Because it doesn't make any sense. Anyway. So you want to add a roughly uh, kind of a two to one uh, with the oil to the vinegar. Two oils to one vinegar. It's two oils to one vinegar, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or the other way around. I'm honestly not sure, but it doesn't matter. So that's fine. No one's going to actually eat this, right? Oh, God. I'm oh, good. Uh, uh. Anyway, so the next thing that you want to do is stop bounding because you're talking on camera. And then you're going to add a little bit of salt to taste as well as the uh, pepper, you know. We have very good Crimsylvanian salts that uh, we get from the, uh, the swamp, you know. It's right. People always talk about the sea salt, like it's the best thing. Oh, I got the salt from the sea, you know. Salt salt. Yeah, that's like some 1980s cooking, you know. Swamp salt. And then that's it. You just mix it up. That's it. You take it together with your whip. It's very good. So we're just going to pound out this last piece of the beef here. I should also stress to everyone involved, the odds of me having done any of this correctly or Digester having done it correctly is virtually nil. So, you know, safety first, kids. Always with safety. Okay, so now we've gotten that done. We're going to arrange our plate. You know, you want to make a nice, lovely plate here. Okay. I have a plate. Oh, that's the plate. That's the plate. Yes. You know, some of us landed in beds. Okay. We can't all just live by the seat of our pants. You know. Okay. So we're doing all that. We get this nice and uh, arranged like that. And uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, dress this. Now, as you know, we've got our Bison clocks here because, fortunately. Peter, who we murdered earlier, was apparently getting ready to make this exact dish. Amazing. And what are the odds, you know? It's quite lovely. So, the way I would serve this is you take a handful of your nice arugula salad, okay? Swamp grass, whatever you have. Yes, the swamp grass arugula, you know, you put it nice and it. The next thing, we're going to get some of these lovely uh, capers. Oh, I'm boogers. <laughs> They told us we couldn't use them. So we're just going to spread these around the plate. Oh, very nice. Like that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, you've got the, uh, the Parmesan cheese. Now, this was actually made from goats who were born in pools of radiation. Okay, and the best kind of cheese. It is, because it's not so much a nutty flavor as it is poison. It is, it will kill you. Almost instantaneous. Yes, you'll notice that it has a nice healthy glow, you know, and we, we enjoy that. Also, calcium. Very Remember important. To add the glow in post production. I want to ruin his 
So we add the cheese. We get it on top here. It's nice and dressed. Now, Jester, if you'd like to do the honors and put the dressing on, you serve a little dressing. You know, it's a gentle kind of. You might want to actually gentle. whisk this together. I was whisk. supposed to do this earlier. I did it. All right. Obviously. All right. That's probably funny. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So, uh, ladies, let's see if we can find a couple of forks here because again, we are classy individuals. We know what we're doing. I think we have some around. Here. In one of these drawers, undoubtedly. It's not my house. It's not my house either. I think we killed it. Is he still, I was, I was is he still breathing? Yeah, he's, uh, he's all right. Uh, I was asking him to go. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. First thing, ladies and gentlemen, observe. Human cow meat garbaggio. This is for you. All right, America, let's take a taste. Get a little bit of everything in there. Serve it up. I love garbaggio. It's They're so good. Delicious. For those not familiar with Ghoul, can you tell us a bit about yourselves? We are cannibals from Creepsylvania. That's as little as I can say. Your EP, Hang 10, was released back in 2014. What's been the response to it so far? Well, uh, as a result of putting out that EP, We'll never have to work again. Yes, we're basically sitting on giant piles of money right now. I'm thinking yeah, literally right now. I, I'm only three feet tall. I'm just standing on a pile of money. You guys writing any new material? If so, when can we expect it? No. What? No, we are. We are working on the new album, and it's going to be the same death, violence, misery, and destruction as all of our other stuff. I thought it sounded pretty good. What's your writing process like? You guys all write together? It's more the effort of one particular member of the band. I write every day. What? What's the strangest thing that's ever happened to you on tour or one of your shows? Uh, there's, there's one time we actually got paid to perform. It was crazy. In money. American money. Which is virtually useless to us in Pennsylvania. So actually, it's quite offensive when you think about it. Let's go kill that guy. What would fans be surprised to find on your iPods? Uh, the entire discography of Fiona Apple. Uh, Britney Spears. Enya. Uh, Jerry Reed. I have Jerry Reed. I have Jerry Reed. I love you, man. I love you too, buddy. <laughs> Strand on Desert Island can take three records for the rest of all eternity. Assuming you have a solar powered CD player, what would they be? Uh, Fiona Apple. Britney Spears. Jerry Reed. Actually, I think I'd want food instead of albums. Man, you're always thinking. You're always with the thinking. You're so smart, man. If you could bring one musician back from the great beyond, who would it be? Madonna. Madonna. Yeah, I always regretted the fact that I didn't get a chance to kill her myself. She's not dead. What? All right, here's the setup. You find somebody's wallet, Nobody's around, nobody sees you find it. It's filled with cash, or it's got a winning lottery ticket. Do you return it to the owner, or what do you do? Well, uh, in Cripsylvania, the currency is uh, turnips, and the lottery, I think, is all about killing people. So I would, I would just go, go to his address and uh, murder him. That checks out. Yeah. You're on stage and you suffer catastrophic gear failure. What do you do? That literally happened in Los Angeles, and nobody cared. Yes, we just soldier through, pretend like we're playing, and those idiots eat it up. Those guys that we pay to stand backstage and actually make the music? Yes. They know how to do their job. What's the creepiest fan encounter you've ever had? We have fans? It's the first record you ever bought with your own money. <coughs> it was... It was... A Care Bear Christmas. Oh, it's a good one. It's a, it's a classic album. It costs 15 turnips. Rich kid. <laughs> What's next for Ghoul? We're going on tour to Maryland Death Fest and back to the west coast of your United States in May. And we're going to spread disease, destruction, and horror all over. Your stupid country. All right.
Pretty good. Can you grab some chopsticks? Mm.